Today we're going to talk about the kinetic molecular theory of gases. I have two beakers in front of me. One is filled with very cold water and one is filled with very warm water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a couple of drops of food coloring into each and I would like for you to observe what happens. Okay, so first of all here, one, two, okay, and make sure you can see, and then one, two, oops, put three, sorry. Okay, now hopefully you guys, you can already see a difference between the behavior of the food coloring in the warm water and the behavior of the food coloring in the cold water. Okay, in which of these two beakers would you agree with me that the food coloring is moving around more. It's really different, huh? The way that it's behaving. We've got sink and cheer. Sustain at the top and slowly making its way, slowly making its way down. Okay, so why does this one appear to spread out so much more than the cold water? Really interesting how differently they're behaving. The food coloring is getting pushed around. What is it getting pushed around by? Well, it's getting pushed around by the water molecules. It's really interesting because I think that this counter cooled this beaker off really, really quickly. And that is the reason why we don't have any of this coming down here. But you can see anyway at the top, you guys, that it's completely uniform. Completely. It has dispersed completely. Whereas here we've got we've got little pockets of dispersion, but nothing like what has occurred here, right? Where we've got the we've got the food coloring just completely dispersed throughout. <laughs> really interesting top layer there. Okay, so why is that the case? That is our topic for today. All right, so in those beakers, we've got the, um, we've got the food coloring dispersing more thoroughly in the warm water, on the top half of the warm water anyway, um, it's dispersing more thoroughly because the molecules of water um, and the hot water are moving around faster than the water molecules in the cold water. And so when we measure temperature, what are we really measuring? Well, we are measuring the kinetic energy of the molecules that make that thing up. So we're talking about gases in particular. I use the fluid. I, I, I use the liquid to show this. Um, um, so, actually, you guys, the temperature of anything 
is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules that make, or the particles, we're talking about a pure element, the atoms, that make up um, that thing. All right, but we are specifically talking about gases, so I'm going to narrow our discussion now to gases. So the temperature of a gas is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules that make up that gas. And so the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy. The lower the temperature, the lower the kinetic energy of the molecules that make that substance up. So what is, what is kinetic energy? What is the formula? Do you remember the formula from physics? Kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. One half times the mass times the velocity squared. And so, yeah, we can say the temperature of a gas is a measure of how fast the molecules of gas are moving, but technically, you guys, that is not correct because it is, it's not simply velocity. It also, mass comes into consideration as well. And we'll see this as we talk about this more this week, um, how we have to take this into account. So yeah, by far, the biggest contributor to uh, something's kinetic energy is its velocity. Um, but we can't leave mass out of the equation. All right, so M is mass, V is velocity. One really important thing to keep in mind about temperature. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this very very simple here with temperature. Okay, so we've got two gases. Let's say we've got oxygen gas, which has got a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. And let's say we've got um, carbon dioxide gas, which um, we add 12 more to that, so it's going to be 44 grams per mole. All right, so this is a more massive gas. Okay, molecule for molecule, this molecule of gas has a greater mass than this molecule of um, gas. All right, so let's say that both of these gases are at the same temperature. Okay, so they're both at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, they're both at 25 degrees Celsius. So that means that both of these gases have exactly the same kinetic energy. If they are at the same temperature, they have the same kinetic energy. Are they moving at the same speed? Remember, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. And so we must take mass into consideration. And so, if these two gases are at the same temperature, that means they have the same kinetic energy. But they do not have the same velocity, because this gas is more massive. So carbon dioxide, at the same temperature, at the same kinetic energy, the velocity of carbon dioxide is going to be a little bit less than the velocity of an oxygen molecule because the oxygen molecule has a smaller mass.
temperature is an index of the random motion molecules. The higher the temperature, the more energetic the molecules are. Everything moves. Solids, liquids, and gases. It's just the gases are free to move around a lot more. Right? Solids are locked in uh, a lattice work, a matrix. So they pretty much jiggle in place. Liquids. They cling to the particles of a liquid cling to one another. So their motion is limited as well. And yeah, they can then you know slip slip and slide past one another faster. Um, but not like a gas. Gases are uh, free to move about, take up as much room as you'll give them, and. Um, they aren't really affected by other gas molecules. They're not attached to them. So we use kinetic molecular theory to provide the explanation for the observed behavior of gases. Okay, so what the heck is this kinetic molecular theory? Kinetic means what? Moving molecule theory. Okay, so it's this idea that gas particles, gas molecules are on the move and free to move about in whatever space you give them that provides the explanation for the gas laws. Why is it that as volume of a gas decreases, decreases, so you, you're shrinking the container that a gas is in, why is it that the pressure of that gas goes up? Okay, what is happening at the molecular level that explains that phenomenon? That's what we use kinetic molecular theory to do, is make explanations for these behaviors that we can see with our eyes. And one of the fundamental pieces of this picture is at the molecular level, what is pressure? What do we mean by gas pressure? What causes gas pressure? What causes uh, a balloon to stay inflated, right? What, you think of the balloon as almost having a solid on the inside of it because the whole surface of a balloon is smooth. And so it almost it seems like when you're looking at the thing that there's a solid something in there. But there's not. There's these particles that are just moving, 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 moving. So what's providing the pressure that's keeping that thing blown up or inflated? Um, gas pressure, and you're probably not going to see it because it's in pencil, and so I know way you feel about this, so I'm just going to read it. <clears throat> Gas pressure is caused from the collision of gas particles with a surface. And 
so what is keeping that balloon inflated is not a solid mass of gas on the inside, but instead all of these molecules of gas that are moving, 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 hitting against, colliding with the inside walls of the balloon. And there are so many molecules in there moving around. And they are moving so quickly and they are colliding so often inside wall of that balloon that it just looks like a smooth surface. You can't see all of those individual collisions. So, the more often particles collide with the collision, I'm trying to get it, the more often particles, gas molecules, collide with a surface, we see this as greater gas pressure. The lesser they collide with the surface, and we observe this as low gas pressure. So pressure arises from collisions of those gas molecules against the surface, which is very difficult for us to really conceptualize, you guys, because it looks like a smooth surface. I, I think the balloon is the best thing to think about. You know, it seems solid on the inside, but it's not. That's not what's causing that thing to stay inflated. It's millions of collisions happening very, very rapidly to trick our brain, really, into thinking that it's a smooth surface. Alright, so we'll use, um, tomorrow we'll use kinetic molecular theory to explain all of the gas laws that we've talked about. Okay, if we notice in this hot water beaker, there's no like strands of food coloring left. It's all thoroughly mixed. Whereas if I think, uh, yeah, can you guys see that? That in the cold water beaker, see there's still, there's still food coloring that has not been mixed around enough. Because, well, these water molecules have less kinetic energy than these. Okay.